Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three stakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello, friends. It's your very angry, tired, grumpy Mavs Moneyball editor, Kirk Henderson. Coming to you at 12.15 in the morning on October 30th. It's technically Saturday here in Texas now. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks just got their butts kicked by the Denver Nuggets, 106-75. to And so, guys, I just recorded a podcast with Josh, and I was mad. And you'd think that I would be less mad, but I'm not. I'm, if anything, more mad because those of you who have followed me for a long time know that it is my natural inclination to be an ass. It is my just, just tendency to want to lean into the grumpy shit, to be a, a, a little bit negative. Um, it's just kind of my sports personality. I'm not like this in real life when I'm dealing with everything else, but when it comes to sports, I'm just a pessimist. The Mavericks have been a very good team for a huge, huge chunk of my life, but they've also dished me some soul-crushing defeats, and those sort of things stick with you. And when you suffer through a you know a couple of rebuilding seasons, and we didn't have to deal with that many, somebody like Luca comes around, and you it, it's just such a sense of hope, a sense of what can be. And instead, what has happened with the Mavericks is every single move they have made after drafting Jalen Brunson has fucked up in one way, shape, or form or another. Uh, they've had some things not go their way. They've had some injury issues. Dwight Powell tearing his Achilles. Chris Stapps Porzingis being made out of glass. These things are sort of part of, of the, the deal. But you come into a season like this after they cleared out uh, the, the coaching staff and the front office And I really tried hard to lean into the sense of hope. I tried to look at the sunny side of things. And instead, what I've seen after five games is every one of my fucking fears come to life. Yeah, the Mavericks are three and two. They also beat three lottery teams. Congratulations. In order to to, to win in the playoffs, you have to beat good teams. And instead, they've lost by 13 or 31 and 18 on national TV. In the two games, I made a joke about how I'm going to have to explain this to my mother. I'm quite literally going to have to explain this to my mom. She's going to wonder why the maps are bad. And I don't know what to do with some of this. You know, everyone is so accepting of the Mavs party line. And part of that is because we're fans. But part of it is because there's a complex that surrounds both the Mavericks and the Cowboys that exists to feed back into the bullshit. I am not here for it. This coaching staff has done a disservice to what the offense was, but more on that and more on that, the, the coaching staff was presented with the same group of players that have been with this team for the past several years and expected to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. 
Now, the offense didn't need helping. It used to work just fine. Now the spacing is so bad that these guys can't get good shots off outside of the players who shouldn't be shooting shots to begin with. All right, enough of my pissiness. Let's get you guys up on stage and let's talk about this a little bit. Remember the rules? Uh, rules. There are no rules. This is green room. Um, come on. When I invite you up on stage, just remember to hit that unmute button. Um, you can yell at me if you want. It makes you feel better. I feel a little better after ranting. And let's hang out for a little bit and then maybe go to bed. So coming up first is my man, Brett. How are we doing, Brett? We're doing pretty well. I've had a few drinks, so I'm pretty <laughs> frustrated as well. Um, I mean, this this start of the season, I mean, like it very easily could have, could be much worse, like record wise. Like a, a few bounces the wrong way, and you're like winless. Um, and that's, I mean, like like winning by a couple possessions over like the worst teams in the league, and then just completely shitting the bed against against teams that have like like remotely competent NBA players. It's just it's just like a way that like. It's the kind of thing that makes me just like not enjoy watching, and I and like I really do enjoy watching, um, but like a game like tonight is just just makes me just makes me really like really hate basketball, and like I I love it. Um, Expand on I, that. Exp- to explain well, because I mean I hate only feeling dis- disdain or rage. Like <laughs> it's just been a while. Well, well, it's been well, like I mean, the playoffs, maybe game. Three? No, game four against the Clippers where it really was like euphoric. And I just Yeah, I mean like like I don't know. I mean like like it's, it's the whole thing, it's like like this whole offseason and everything, like like I get like like the implications like they, they wanted to change stuff was good. Um like recognizing that their stuff needed to be changed was good. And then like everything after that point was just so bad. Like everything from that point on, every hire like in every move was bad and it's just like and like i get like we've had like you know an off season of like well let's give it a chance like like i think we've like given it a chance like the, the, there's a there's a point at which like it like it is what it is and and like like i, I don't i just don't know like how much more like 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 i mean like it's to some extent like confirmation bias but like like kid is like a like a he's a really bad nba coach is his Teams have never been good. He's never had any success. <laughs> like, th- there's, th- there's no like. It's not like he's some coach where like you know he his team went on a good run one time, and so like we're trying to recapture that magic. It's been like really bad always. And and like I, I just can't. And, and okay, and, and this is something I was thinking of the other night as well. But like the whole like leadership council thing, and like to to what extent that's like a real thing, I don't know. Obviously, that's like an internal thing. I only know that it, like what's been reported. But the idea of like the players deciding X Y Z thing happening, who starts, who would, it's like a massive cop out as as a coach. And of course, it's, it's, of it's, course. This, I mean, I'm getting bitched at. I'm getting bitched at right now by multiple people for retweeting a kid quote out of context, and I'm just like, oh, the, oh I'm not, not here for defending. Here? Yeah, I'm new here. I'm not. Fuck I'm it. not here for defending this man. You're like you're on the hot seat when you come in and defend a gen- or like when you have a generational offensive player, you come in and the offense is now bottom five. Sorry, Befriendo, you play a role there, even though I really don't think it's like, all him. Like they could have they could they could have hired Greg Popovich and the and if the offense looked like that, you'd be on the hot seat. Like he doesn't like like the other stuff is just extra. Yeah. Like like regardless of who, who he was. But like I mean, but but that kind of thing, it's like if you're a like you're a manager, you're a boss, and like there's like a responsibility that goes along with that. Like your, your decisions are your own. If you like pop out by like saying that this is like the, the, all the players get to decide for themselves. We're going to like play, you know, fucking 15 players in a, in, in a game because, you know, it makes people feel happy. Like that's, a, that's like good. And like, what, like whatever, like they wanted to have a coach that was going to make the pl- players feel happy. But like, that's not like in the long term like an, like an effective strategy. Like these guys, the players have to be professionals, and like I, I just don't think the the idea, like even beyond the X's and O's part, like it's not a team that like feels like they have any like emotional, um, like need like will to win, like 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 the the, the bit in the first half and like yesterday's game where they you know came back from being down by a lot and they played good defense, like that was good, but it's still yeah. not like they don't show passion. It's not like they're like, like they're getting like embarrassed in this game tonight, and it's not 
and it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like it's embarrassing to them in the way that it should be. And like, I, I don't know. I, I don't normally want to be like, I'm not normally like, don't want to be that guy about like, like, like the, the way like the, you know, players or, you know, anyone involved with the team should be feel emotionally or whatever. But like, I mean, as a fan, like you, you want them to like feel like shitty when like they play that bad. And I got, well, I think it was Jose asked me last night, do you think they're going to win? And my answer was I mean, no. I, no, I mean, like, like, it was, it, it, like the, the fact that they lost, that was not the issue. Like, 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 uh, mm-hmm. like it, it was a schedule loss in the first place. But, like, losing by, like, 30 points, like, and in the fa- – like, like they scored 97 points a game through the first five games. Uh, that's looked really, really bad. Like, incredibly bad. Like, like you, you have to try to be mm-hmm. that bad in, like, the like 2021 NBA to score 97 points a game. Yeah, I, I – I talked about this briefly, and I'm going to be interested to hear what other people say if they think I'm wrong, because I could be wrong here. But I've been thinking a lot about what Haral Bob posted a few days ago, where he was talking about the fact that they had the boxes on the offense where they when they were practiced with their spacing. And the spacing just isn't there anymore. It's not definitively worse, but it's marginally worse. And everybody in the NBA, particularly when it comes to the better teams, like your top 10, the margins is where your money is made. And right now, the Mavericks just aren't doing anything marginally well at all on an offensive standpoint where the guys who are getting your shots, like Dorian is getting open shots, and he is going to be fine. He's 5 of 26 for 3 on the year. I'm not worried about Dorian. But Dorian can't be relied on. And the fact is they're putting him in this position again to fail where they expect too much of him. And then your good shooters, Tim Hardaway Jr. is an example, is constantly out there on the floor with Dorian and Powell. So his looks are shaded every single time he touches the ball. There's no longer the the open space shots. Now, Tim may not be the best example because Tim actually it tends to shoot this at least last year. He shot the same whether the defender was like six feet off him or in his face. But you understand what I'm saying? Like, am I wrong about this when I'm watching this team play offense? Yeah. Because I think Luca is overpassing the hell out of the ball for one, and then the shots that they're taking are stupid. Yeah, I mean, like, like I, I just can't. I just can't understand the offense. I mean, like in the sense that, like I don't know. Like I want, I watch a lot of college basketball as well. But like it, like looks like they're playing college offense. Some of the stuff, and like some of those, like the, the minor stuff, like when they run, like the kind of like weave nonsense that like looks like a college offense. And that's only occasionally. But like there's still there's still bits of it that like just make make me think like that. This is not like it's it's not a well thought out system designed to get you good shots. It just like they're just like again it's just, like it's like they're going through the motions of like what an offense should, should like what they feel an offense should feel like but it, like it doesn't result in any it, it's not designed to get you certain looks in the way that like a good efficient offense should get you looks in spots on the floor with good players making like in, in good positions to make to make plays. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it feels like they're almost like they're not as bad as they're playing. Like, like that's part of this. Like it's both scheme, but it's also shot making that I think regresses in a positive fashion at some point. But there's just, you know, starting Dwight Powell is against Nikola Jokic as the only big is a, a I, yeah. I, I called it in the podcast, an organizational failure. To where multiple people must have thought that was a good idea. Well, well it wasn't. Well, the, the whole thing is like, like, like Powell and his inability to vent, and it's like, like he has like lots of issues, but like this specific issue of of his complete inability to defend a certain type of center is has been true his entire his career. Entire and career. Has never changed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's a thing that's like been very obvious um, for for so long that it's just like. Like again, it, it was what someone said. Like a couple, like a, a like a, I don't know it was when it was, but it was just like like it seems as if Kid is like ne- had like not watched a single minute of film of like yeah. the Mavericks yeah. prior to this season, and then it's just like it's like trying to reinvent the wheel, and like there are like these players are not young, and this like this is the thing about like the Mavericks aren't a young team. They're not like the Sixers no. or whatever. They're not like whatever team that like. Has a bunch of young guys like Luca they're is past, young. They're, they're above average of the of the yeah they're like yeah, seventeen yeah and like, like these are guys that have played in the NBA for years have lots of film on them their tendencies are the same like Luca and Brunson are the only two players who have like really in any way have any potential to like probably grow in the league um, every other player is who yeah. they are um, and and like 
it's just not gonna it's not they're not gonna do something drastically different just because you know it's a new season well thank you for joining in the meantime while we've been talking i now have 15 people waiting so i should probably bring up some more folks do you uh, got anything else before we head out um, nope thanks for having me on Okay, I'm going to try to bring up a variety of folks in different orders. Uh, if I haven't seen your name in here for a while, I'm probably going to bump you to the top of the key, so don't take offense. Um, I see here Jonathan. Jonathan, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Oh, I feel better after yelling and screaming like a loon. Uh, I feel pretty good after hearing you rant. You kind of said what I wanted to say. I just uh, had a, a stray observation. Uh, I just think that the team kind of lacks um, an identity and direction. Um, you know, that narrative that Donnie started with, like, you know, the next step that Luke is about to take is he's going to learn how to share the ball. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they all left. And then um, <laughs> kid came in and said the same so damn thing. Kid, yeah. <laughs> so I, I just, my thing about that is it, it kind of leaves me confused because, you know, Luke hard carried this roster to a fifth seed in seven games. And the conclusion that they're trying to push is that, you know, Luca was holding back actually all of these underutilized guys like Dorian Finney Smith. And they're going to unlock the offense by having him post up five times, Mm. uh, run off the line and then, uh, you know, shoot a long mid range, which has never been part of his game. And it's just like, he, um, shot a, he shot a running floater tonight, and I screamed. My wife was like, get a hold yeah. of yourself. And I'm just like, this is this is impossible to watch. And it's just like, they, I, I, just, I don't know. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think that's that's kind of a problem with, with dudes like him is, you know, let Luca make the – I mean, it sounds kind of messed up, but, like, you know, let him do the thinking. Let him create the shots and just, like, don't think about it. Get the ball and shoot it. And um, I feel like having to make that decision whether to to drive or shoot or pass is kind of like not in in Dorian's game. So he needs to just shoot the ball. But, you know, uh, Luca needs to learn how to facilitate better according to Kid. And I thought it's just like every ball. And now we're getting into the post-game quotes. And um, for anybody – and and – I don't blame you. Jason Kidd was a, a Bucks coach a while ago. I know some Bucks people. Jason Kidd's an excuse maker is what he is. And some of the things he said tonight are, well, I just I don't really know. Got to figure it out. And it's just like, guys, the Mavericks three offensive lineups, according to Josh Bowe, the, no, the Mavericks two starting lineups this season have been outscored 48 points in 64 minutes of play. <laughs> That's real bad. <laughs> it's real bad. I mean, Brunson, once again, was kind of like the bright spot for me, but even that wasn't really there. And I just, I don't know what to do with some of this stuff. Yeah, I would say if there's one good thing about what Kid is doing, it's it's how they're trying to make Brunson or is seemingly successfully making Brunson into more of like a, a passing guard. Uh, but I, I will say one last thing before I go is is just what baffles me is the the – attempt to focus on defense and turn this into a defensive team without the personnel to make that happen. Like you're not going to be a top defense with Luca on the floor, Tim Hardaway Jr., Dwight Powell at the five. Like it's just not a thing that's going to happen. So, yeah, we're going to war in and, and you know, if they run this roster out against the Kings on Sunday, the, or not the roster, of course they got to run the roster. If they run the same lineup that we've seen again, if they don't make a drastic change, I'm going to be I'm going to be very surprised because a, a mid afternoon game is going to go one of two ways. Either Luke is going to absolutely show out because it's a two thirty game where they like showing these games where people in Slovenia can actually see the game while not staying up in the middle of the night, or the Kings are just going to run them off the floor. I think it'll probably be the former because I, I expect these guys to have some pride. Like I, Josh and I are just looking forward to everyone who likes to tell us that we're wrong all the time yelling at us. And I, I prefer that, frankly, because I want a definitive blowout win. I've not felt good about any of these games. I understand it's a work in progress. But have, uh, what we're all talking about here kind of comes back to the fact that what we're seeing is regression in a way that is concerning, Right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like to see that too. Like even just any above 500 team um, would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> and like, 
by 10 points. That's I'll take it. Well, thanks All for right, hanging uh, out, thanks Jonathan. For, yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Coming up next. I got my man. I got a man down here. Um, I don't know how to say your name, so I don't want to butcher it. Um, how do we say your name, sir? <laughs> it's above. Uh, I'm just angry right now. Um, well, I <laughs> I just found out today that a talent deficit plus a bad coach equals total bullshit. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> tell tell me oh, more. Did you see uh, that? Uh, did you see that uh, Dorian pull up three? Uh, it was garbage time, but. Dorian hit up. Uh, he took a pull up three, which missed very badly. Which I I didn't watch a ton of the fourth quarter because when I saw um, Bol Bol cross over uh, everybody's everybody's favorite young man, um, who is it here? Uh, Moses Brown, and then like lob off a, du- a, a, a a pass for a dunk. I was like, I I can't do this anymore. So I didn't see the pull up three. But tell me about it. Yeah, it was just awful. And then uh, when Dwight Powell checked into the second quarter, there were three straight possessions that the Nuggets missed the shot and got an offensive rebound and then made the shot. Yeah, yeah. He just... hes It's, it's frustrating because when they put him in for certain reasons and you can at least understand the logic on offense, but on defense, if he gets up that first shot... It really it's a, it's game over. I mean, teams are shooting seventy percent on Powell at the rim, and then because he's just not he doesn't have great uh, he has really high hips and he's not good at boxing out. And plus, like, Jokic is a bull. It's it's just you know they, they're giving up points in the paint. They they expect team boarding whenever they were doing that, and the Mavericks just didn't do a, a great job with that tonight. I mean, the 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 Nuggets had only five offensive rebounds. Um, but they out rebounded the Mavericks fifty one to thirty six. Like there's a, I mean that uh, primarily because the Mavericks shot twenty nine point five percent from the floor. That's impressive. I didn't even realize it was that bad until I just looked. Yeah, the shot really bad, and Jokic is probably the best post player in the NBA, maybe after Embiid. Uh, yeah, but uh, certainly harder to guard. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can mute. Mute buttons. On. Yeah. Hi. Sorry. I got a call. That's okay. That's, that's happened to me when I record during the day and my boss calls. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, I'm on a green room. Yeah, so the Jason Jason Kidd quote, uh, I'm new to this. Maybe you should have just sh- sh- thought about that uh, before you took uh, took on a coaching job on a team with a perennial MVP candidate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... My biggest conspiracy... My biggest conspiracy theory right now is that he knew that if he chose a job in Portland, uh, he'd be on the hot seat right away. He thought he'd be safe in Dallas, but... I don't think he's. I have kind of held that position for a while, but, you know, the Mavericks schedule is the sort where I don't really know if they have a true, like, difficult stretch where they're going to play like 10 straight playoff teams or something. So I'm of the opinion that they will play about 500 basketball for most of this year. And we're just going to have to sort of live with this frustration. And I'm going to have to find a way to talk about the Mavs without saying the same thing. One thing I noticed that uh, Luca hasn't looked like Luca right now. Either he's I... fatigued, or maybe he's injured because his right leg has been taped up pretty well over the past few days. Well, I think he showed up out of shape again. Um, he looked really good in the Olympics, and he has not looked good in like physically his body type. Like he, he he doesn't have a lot of definition. He never maybe he never will, but he's a step slow again. He hasn't the the last time he really looked good on off the dribble in terms of at least like quickness was year two. 
And we've had two straight years now where he just looks a step slow. I also think he's hunting contact a little more than he ought to be, um, which that's just sort of the existence of Luca. So maybe I shouldn't complain about that. But I also think he's overpassing. And I'm not sure if that's by choice or if that's kid emphasizing that he needs to use all the paints, whatever the hell that means. Um, but he really, he, he doesn't look great. Um, he's the, the numbers, I guess, are okay, but it's five games and we've not seen the, the Luka game that makes you go, oh, wow. Yeah, I thought I, we were going to get this one, get it in this one because he was playing against Jokic and he always brings his best game against Jokic. But uh, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. I got to bring some more folks up. Do you have anything else you want to uh, talk about before I? Yeah, just one last thing. If I found find out a year or two later that the Mavericks didn't trade for Goran because they didn't want to give up Dwight Powell. I'll... Well, you know, Dwight Powell was going to get his his statue before Dirk Nowitzki, so I'm not sure there's much we can do there. But I absolutely agree. I'm going to lose my mind. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope you come back. Yeah, thanks. Have a good night. Okay, coming up next. Woo! Got a group. All right, going to bring Jose next. Hey, Jose, what's <sighs> I don't know where to start, honestly. I mean, we should start with your really spicy new profile photo where you look sharp. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, I, I don't take many pictures, so when I get a haircut, that's when I like to try to take pictures and actually post something. I feel you, man. I'm just messing around. What do you got for us tonight? <laughs> well, I, I got my Dwight Powell shit off the other night. So I don't I don't even really feel like touching on him other than the fact that as soon as I seen the math starting five lineup that he was involved, I was like, yo, this is going to be another long night. But uh, other than that, I'll start off here. I've been a Cowboys fan almost all my life. I know the how Jerry Jones is as an owner. I know his success as an owner. And this is all going to correlate back to the Mavericks, I promise. Just give me some time to tell this. <laughs> so for 10 years as a Cowboys fan, we've had a roster. We've had some good players on both sides of the ball. Maybe not so much on defense, but we had offense. We had that down pat. And for 10 years, I had to watch Jason Garrett be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And we always had, we were always there in contention. And finally, we moved on from him. And last season, we didn't get nowhere. Dak was down. And this season, we're now five and one. And what happened going into this season, Jerry Jones said that he was going to do anything that he could to make sure that the Cowboys get in a position to win as a Super Bowl. And part of that was, shutting the fuck up and this season he has shut the fuck up mark cuban needs to take note because often we compare mark cuban and jerry jones to each other because they damn near run their teams the same fucking way for three years i i seen luca get drafted and i seen this amazing talent i seen dirk retire i seen harrison barnes get traded I've seen some talent walk in and out of this door and this roster hasn't changed much. I really like Frank. I really like um, Jalen Brunson. I really like Finney Smith. Uh, I'm, I'm on the fence about Maxi, but for the sake of this team and organization, we, we need to move on from some of these players. The Hawks, the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies, a lot of people were questioning their roster build because they were trading away uh, Valanchunas for Steven Adams and they got a uh, draft compensation and they drafted a, a young talent. And some people might have thought that was setting them back a year or two. And there was even some rumors about Dylan Brooks um, possibly as a trade asset. And if you look at the Grizzlies, they're 
kind of competing. I mean, they're a really scrappy team. So when you look at the Mavs, I, I had asked Bibbs about this because when it comes to Nico, we all know he's a new GM. I'm willing to give him lead way. I'm willing to see what he's going to do uh, by the trade trade deadline. So I, I'm not tripping on Nico. But what, what I am curious about and what I had asked Bibbs is are we willing to – break this roster up, set set ourselves back a year or two, and actually get some talent through the draft. Because we uh we see guys like Amarui, we see guys like uh Hunt, Jones. Those were some good guys and granted they're twenty four years old, they're more experienced and things like that, but it just makes you really wonder should we go ahead and possibly blow it up this season and make our way back? Well, let's give it a couple more games before I answer this one in depth, because I do want to talk about this, but it's also about one in the morning. So hold on to this and remind me again in a couple, if, if, if things go South, I will say that, that, more or less what you're talking about is something I've been beating the drum on for a while. And more, a lot of our fans don't want to hear it um, because you don't join a fan base and be part of a fan base to be grumpy all the time. But it's this, just this process has been challenging because the Mavericks did one thing right. And it feels like, you know, the, the, it, it feels like everything since has been, you know, they, they felt that they were born on they were born on third thinking they hit a triple with Luca. It's like not everything you touch has been gold. I mean, the Mavericks have had a pretty bad decade um, when it comes to, you know, basically all their roster acquisitions. So I don't know, you know, and sometimes all you need is a little bit of luck. Like your Cowboys thing is is pretty important. I mean, they stumbled into some excellence this year on their defense, the Cowboys did. And and you just need that sometimes. And unfortunately for the Mavericks, they've they got lucky with Luca and have been unlucky in everything else. And so We'll talk about this one soon because I think it's worth it's worth discussing, particularly if things go sideways. But I don't think they will in a way that's that significant. I think they're going to be just good enough to really, really irritate the shit out of us, like seven, eight seed at this point. So we'll see. Well, thank you, Jose. I got to bring on some more folks. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks for bringing me up. Sure thing, buddy. Okay, coming up next, got a long time caller. Y'all are going to love him. It's our man Akiva. How you doing, Akiva? Hit that uh, button hi, down hi, there. There hi, we go. Hi, Kurt. Same here. You're great talking to. You. So I am a Luca fan, as you know. I'm from New York, and uh, I came with my son-in-law all the way from New York to see the game. Oh tonight. no! Did you really? Denver. Yeah, it's still it still was was worth it. I'll tell you because I got we got the two seats behind the basket. Closest to the Mavericks bench. Awesome. Tell me about it. What did so, you see? Let's hear all about it. We were right there. So, you know, right away, my son-in-law starts talking to, uh, you know, we came really early. We came like an hour before game time. And we're sitting there. And a few of the Mavericks are shooting around. I said and, hi to Jared Dudley. <laughs> that's my that's, that's my son-in-law. So you said, so Josh. Th- th- I just th- said th- hi, and I heard him on a few podcasts, like real ones and whatever. But sure. um uh, I mean, this I, game. <laughs> but then, but then, but then, but then there's, there's this, there's, Kirk, I kid you not. It looked like there were two security people in the whole building, and both of them were right next to us. One was an older woman that could barely move. And one guy and, had a walking boot. And guy, on. one guy was like 50 years old, had a walking boot on, who would, he would never scare you without the walking boot, too. So he's, so he got on my son in law's case. What did he say to you? Yeah, he's like, oh, don't distract them, like whatever. It was like, don't speak this, to is, them. this is an hour and a half before the game started. I was just, I was just being friendly. It's over there. It was pathetic. And it looked like there were only two security people in the whole arena, and they were both by the Mavericks bench. And, and it was it was funny. It was funny. But then then later on in the game, there were two other Mavericks fans sitting next to us, uh, close at the you know the, the other way in the basket, and they were getting into with with some of the uh, Dow, uh, uh, Nuggets fans. And the Nuggets fans were like, first of all, also the Nuggets fans were getting on Lucas' case. Like 
they were so obsessed with Luca, and Luca was having a terrible game. But why are you so obsessed with Luca? That think, that means he's a great. I great think player. it's a jealousy thing. I think yeah. Luca gets far more respect than Jokic does, and I'm not so sure Luca's better than Jokic. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it, for how for how the league is played now. Like Jokic is really is pretty. Incredible, but I think Luca has the easier path to more success just because he's going to have the ball more by definition of the position. That's right. That's but right. I, I Much think, sexier. Than, I than think you know, no, he's a sexier player. But I think with the the new foul calls, I mean, we're already seeing with Harden, they're not rewarding the slashing type. It's I mean, I'm sure these these guys are crafty. They'll figure out the next thing. But I mean. That was I've never seen a game where it just they were down eight in the beginning of the third. I felt oh, okay, a quick little run, a couple quick threes, maybe Dodo gets going, maybe Hardaway, and it 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 just it felt like Monty Morris had fifty points. It just it uh, we're looking for things to point to. I'm like uh, Josh Green, seven yeah. rebounds with a plus <laughs> ten, <laughs> the, the best player in the Mavericks this in garbage time. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you, uh, Jason Kidd. Uh, you know, I you know I got on Carlisle's case right away. I th- I don't know if Jason Kidd I, he, he could be worse than Carlisle even. I think he he this is guy is the, is the secret. He He's got, very bad. So the Mavericks are getting killed inside all game long, and I know people don't like Boban. I think Boban should play twenty minutes every game. Boban gives gives He's Jokic okay. a, a shocking amount of trouble. Like their their countrymen. Yeah. And over the years, like, Boban has actually given him a little bit of guff. Um, there was the game right before the pandemic. Uh, the Mavericks were the last team playing. And Boban went nuts on Jokic. Like, it was it was like a 30-15 game, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And, and it was so obvious to me for, like, a, a half and plus, a half and plus, when it started to get it to 20 points up, they're killing us under the basket. And, and he's got... He's got two small guys against Jokic. And I'm thinking, put to some size in. And I, I finally, I actually like screamed out. Hey, one of the few times I screamed out for the, loud enough for the players and your kid to hear. Hey, put some size in there. Put Boban in there. A few minutes later, he puts Boban in. I think they were down 20 already. Yeah, and, yeah. And then he puts him in for like five, three, four minutes. I mean, big, big, big deal. So the two good teams they've played, the Hawks and Nuggets, they looked absolute. I mean, this was a back-to-back they flew in yep. from. So, ah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You, you were able to play. Like, you guys showed up and played fine. I, I don't know. It's, That's right. It's the, I'm more concerned about the getting blown out by good teams. Like, it'd be one thing if they, if they showed up and lost by 10, <laughs> but they were done midway through the third. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right on the money about Luca. Luca was in great shape for the Olympics. But it's so sad. He 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 took two or three weeks it's off and really got fed relatable again. In one <laughs> sense, because that would happen to most of us. But this guy, it's like, man, you got to stay on top of this yeah. stuff. I don't get how he's the favorite for MVP two years in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's just because of the overseas money. I, I actually asked about that because I'm like, he's not going to get it. What are we doing here? And I think just lots of money flows in for him because people want to bet on him. But my, my long-term call on – yeah, I know you had that question posted. Uh, is is a kid going to last a year? Man. Are you 100% on? Uh, but I think he may last two years, but Luca – either Luca leaves or he leaves. He's, Luca is going to get upset pretty quick. He may – he may – I don't know if Kokoskov is really good. He may – he may – he may force Kokoskov on, on Cuban if, you know, Cuban can't figure it out by himself. Cuban, Cuban is just the main problem is you still don't have a general manager. He hires a guy like yeah. Nico Harris. We don't have – it looks bad for the next few years, I'm afraid. It yeah. really looks bad. Well, it takes, a, it takes a few things to swing things around. You know, just a couple of things right going a team's way. So I'm still like – Yeah, basketball. Yeah, basketball. You're right. Basketball, one player could make – one player next to Luca could make a big difference. Yeah, it's true. It's, I'm, I'm still and you kind of – I'm him. bullish, but it's just – when I was really pissed an hour ago, it's just I described this these games as, and I may have even led the podcast with this. It's just these first five games have exhibited every single problem that Josh and I talked about, and our site covered. And you know, I've gotten lost. To, you know, I get nasty messages. Ah, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. It's just like Jason Kidd was a is is. You know, let's just say he's improved. 
he still is not like like I've seen nothing through these first few games to go. Oh, that's why they signed Jason Kidd, and you know it's not great. It's not great. The, the bottom line is he was a coach for four years, two different teams. One uh, one year with Brooklyn, where three years with uh, who Milwaukee. It, it's enough time to start doing something. Yeah. Uh, with the team, and he didn't really well, succeed, and that doesn't. And change. the Bucks jumped to a sixty-one team the year after he left. So, <laughs> right. Well, I, I got to bring on some right. more folks because I promised t- uh, guys plenty of uh, people plenty of opportunity to complain. So, thank you for coming up. I'm sorry that you had to experience a yeah. crappy game live, but those at least sound like awesome seats. Yeah, but awesome seats. I would do it again because the seats are great, and I got them for like seven hundred bucks a seat. It was amazing. Amazing. That's outstanding. Yeah, Denver has a bit of a. They, their games aren't, aren't all – like they have uh, – as much as we complain about the Dallas market about not being able to see the games on TV, the Denver like just wasn't showing them for, for an extended stretch. It's like they're playing into the void. It was yeah. very weird. All right. Well, hope to talk soon. Thanks for coming up. Okay. Let's work through a few more folks. Um, who we got here? Andrew, it's been a while. Hey, good evening, Kirk. Thanks for joining. How you doing? Doing well. Down 14 to 10, down 16 to 4, up 14 to 10, down 17 to 1, down 22 to 15. Those are the scores of every game in the first quarter when Dwight Powell checks out of the game. (laughs) Which combines it, it actually add up to an even 32 minutes of game time for a net score of Mavs 44, opponent 79. Yeah, that's real bad. I mean, it's they've been, these whole starting lineups have just been a mess, kind of regardless of who's in. But I just I don't understand how they keep going to Powell. I don't think removing Powell fixes it, but I think it's a start. Yes, it's it's got to start somewhere. We've seen it for years, and apparently, kid does not listen to anything that happened in the past years. He just wants to see it for a fresh start. And what's uh, his wisdom is learning from other people's mistakes. And uh, yeah, 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 man, it was. It's going to be rough to watch. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not sure. You know, the fact that they haven't led at the end of any first quarter this season is something that hangs with me. Um, they're playing Luca these like eight and a half minute stretches. And I don't think he's had a single one yet this year where he actually looked good in that eight and a half minute stretch. I mean, nope. and there was the game last night where fans told me, that the the energy like for, with the guys on the floor picked up when he left, and that's he's got to be yeah. better than that. Yes, and I was there last night, and yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, uh, we'll see if they do well against better teams against Miami or Boston next week. Which that does sound like grindy ass games. If yeah, playing playing the Heat is gonna suck. So and they're and they're both home games, so who knows. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they could be all right. Yeah, a game in Miami just sounds like a recipe for disaster. Oof. Especially right now. Yeah. Well, thank you. You got anything else? That's it for now. It's have a good one. You're the man, Andrew. Appreciate you coming up. All right. Coming up next, then we're going to bring Mark, who's been waiting forever. Mark, how you doing? Good, right, man. And you? I'm better now. That's why we call this group therapy. I'm sure my wife's going to be pissed, though, because I've been walking <laughs> around downstairs talking loudly on my phone. I uh, know, and in serio, it's assumed as madre, it's a mess. That's what this is. That's the problem. Like I've, and you know, I, I've said this a couple of times. Like a, a lot of times, I, I I say things and people don't believe me. But I knew as soon as this off season occurred and all these moves happened that it was going to be nothing. Like we didn't move the needle at all. It was all just lateral moves that didn't amount to nothing. It's just and and all this stuff about and, and I get it. It's still early. <clears throat> but from what I've seen thus far, there's nothing that's really changed at all. And as, as you said, it's digressed. So there's really nothing that the Mavs can do at this point. They've kind of shot themselves in the foot. And it really, in my opinion, all started with the whole Dwight Powell signing. Like, they should never have given him that contract. I really think they fucked up doing that. I go, I see both sides. I mean, his contract is fine now. Like, they're going to be, they're going to be able to move him. He went from being such an albatross to where now he is a rotation big and he does some things which teams absolutely love. Like the advanced stats on him are still good. Um, the fact that he's willing to set a screen is something that gets overlooked. 
um, even though he's been called for a lot of offensive fouls on that this year. But he he still brings a fair amount. I think the frustration with Powell becomes kind of my, you know, a similar frustration I've had in the past with um, Dorian Finney-Smith and some of these other guys where a little too much is expected of them. And is it Dwight Powell's fault that he started tonight on Jokic? I mean, no. Is it his fault that he keeps getting started? No. But why is that happening is kind of the bigger question where I don't understand. And, you know, we could ask about the lineup and Jason Kidd would yell at us. Um, so. Well, sometimes that some people got to swallow their fucking pride. Sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to cuss. Mm. My bad. That's okay. I've cursed plenty on this. I always mark these as explicit whenever I post them. So. All right. Cool. My bad. Um, but yeah, it's just, that's, that's the issue. We, we knew coming into this, that this was not going to end well, like, as the other gentleman stated earlier, we've already seen the experience through him. And the fact that he said, oh, I'm new to this. Come on, man. That's such a lie. He's not new to this. He's been a coach before and he wasn't a good one. And the whole deal about, oh, well, he got success with the Lakers. Yeah. As an assistant coach, what, what does that prove? Absolutely nothing. And yes, someone in the comment section said something about, yes, that Dwight Powell wasn't the worst trade. I get it, dude. But I don't know. There, there's, I've been a, a, kind of a, a Powell hater for a while. And the thing is, yeah, Josh Richardson, yeah, was another horrible move. And we could say, oh, well, the KP move is probably one of the worst moves. In retrospect, we didn't know what we were getting into until it happened. No, it's a yeah, gamble. Exactly. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, at least KP, when he was playing for the small moments, yes, his offense has, has been struggling. But he's been doing work on the defensive end. Um, granted, he's, he's looked good this year. No, in the defense, yeah. he has. He's looked much better. I mean, and there is much to be desired as far as his rebounding is concerned. I mean, for a guy that that is seven two, he might as well be six two the way he's rebounding. That's ridiculous. Sure, sure. But in general, it's it's just been a mess, and I hope they can turn it around. But I'm I'm not very confident, and I've been having a lot of doubts for a while. And I mean, I always wish for the best, but I I'm pretty realistic when it comes to this stuff. I mean, I've seen it. I, I'm a Cowboys fan. So you, you know how that crap goes. Sure. So I, yeah, I you start to, off really excited and then you get the wind kicked out of your sails, though maybe not this year. Yeah, I mean, that's the hope, but you know, I, I try to keep a, an open mind about that, but I, I just feel that this, I'm just frustrated. That, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Thanks for joining. I appreciate you coming up. Muchísimas gracias. All right. Coming up next, we're going to bring up uh, hopefully somebody who's happy. You all know him. At least you better know him. Isaac Harris. How we doing, buddy? Kirk, I have one big question. I'm really, I'm really curious on it. What did you think about the new team-issued coaching quarter zips? You know, they looked like um, the static on a 1980s television in Poltergeist. Um, <laughs> that said, I liked it. Like, I've really – the Mavs gear this year is is freaking outstanding. Um, we've all seen the, the – if you haven't, you need to go look them up. But, the, like, the, the coming, like, city uniforms or whatever they're called, the white ones with the green are – oh, my God. Yeah. I just – I can't wait. So – I did. I did like the half. We, we might hear something about them on Monday. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Good stuff. Maybe, possibly, but no. But uh, yeah, I hopped in here a little bit ago. I'm like, I'm over here editing, and I was like, I'm gonna hop in Kirk's screen room and feel the feel the vibe of the fan base. Yeah, the rage. The rage. Um, you know what? I think where you done with Luca, and what some of the fans are saying. Like, I think you have to be honest with this. Of like. Luke is just not in good shape. Like we just have nope. to admit that. And like, he's just, whether it's a long summer or whatever it is, like he's just, he's not there right now. And yeah, there's other issues obviously, but it's okay to admit that. Well, the Luca thing seems to be the most correctable of these where, you know, would it kill the guy to come into camp in shape? <laughs> I mean, you can't really go back on it. You can't. There's not much to do about it now, other than hope that he plays himself into shape like he did last year, because he did this last year too. Um, I, I, but that that is the most correctable of all these things. Where if he is in better shape, he starts the game a little better. He's hitting more shots. Like his jumper looks a little busted right now, but that has to do with the wind. I mean, did you see him at the end of the first half? He looked like he looked like I do at Orange Theory, where I'm about to pass out. 
Yeah, there was that one play that, and I don't know how the timestamp on it, but when uh, Michael Porter Jr. got the ball, I think he stole it. It was around like half court, and he went to take off on a fast break. And Luca was like e- either even with him or even like ahead of him, and he took like one or two steps and just stopped. And I was like, oh, okay. Like mm-hmm. that's like conditioning, but also he's just not there. Body language, everything right now. So we'll see. Yeah, and it's very – it's like and, – and I'm sure you and Nick, because, you know, you and Nick are, like, buoyant people. Like, you're both, like, positive men. That's why you're fun to talk to in real life. It, it, it can get to be, exactly. like, what what I think all of us could use is sort of that authoritative win so that we're not picking at things. Like, the, the game that would really kind of be a palate cleanser of sorts um, to say, okay – they got this one out. They look like a really connected basketball team. This is what we could build on. And I think through five games, even though they have won three, I don't know how, like, I've been struggling to say, okay, outside of really, you know, the Porzingis defense, which is is really worth emphasizing when he's healthy, I've not really seen a lot where I'm like, ah, yes, that's going to be a defining trait of this team this season. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. All right, I'll jump off here. I'll let other people talk. I was just, I'm mean, hanging out and enjoying this. Well, you, you know, good luck editing. I know it's you know, one, this one in the morning editing is brutal. People, people who don't, you know, Isaac and I, well, not just Isaac. I, I, I joke about this with a lot of people. Anybody that like goes to the games and like, it's a lot of work to go and to ask questions. And then there's a ton of people that don't do anything. And, like, I like the doing of things. Like, it's no fun to, like, go to a game and then not get to, like, vent about it somewhere, even if you're, like, writing an opinion piece. But or- Listen, listen, I'm at the stage now, and you know this, with kids and everything, for me to justify to my wife that I'm going to be gone <laughs> another night to a, to a game, I better be doing something with that, with that mm-hmm. content to bring mm-hmm. in money for our family. So, uh that's exactly right. Otherwise, you're getting kneecapped. All right. Well, you have a good night <laughs> yeah. and a good weekend, buddy. All right. See you, Kirk. Okay. Coming up next, we're gonna still got a lot of folks here, but we're going we're gonna to make it through. Oh, man, we had some new folks that were in here and jumped out, but that's okay. Um, let's go through the people that are left. Patrick, how you doing? Good to see you again. Hit that unmute button. All right. I think I got it to work. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, so... I don't even know where to start. It's, <laughs> I think probably just, uh, I thought kid, I was not happy with the hire, but I thought the players seemed happy during the preseason. So I was like, Oh, you know, happy players might play a little bit harder, but through the first five games, it seemed like <laughs> any good mojo during the preseason is just gone. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. I mean, there's enough breaks between games now where I don't think the guys are going to be running on fumes like they were last year. They just have to figure out these slow starts. I mean, the the, the kind of semi out of context kid quotes him talking about. I just I don't know how to do this. To, I don't necessarily think it's on kid. Like that comes back to like the Luca discussion where it's these guys have to have a little bit of point of pride and come out and just execute. Um, they did it against the Hawks those first three or four minutes. I mean, they scored 10 points in the opening nine, uh, three minutes against the Hawks, and then they just fell down. Um, and so, you know, bringing it for an entire quarter, you know, the Kings are an interesting matchup because, frankly, they're three and two, and the two games they've lost are against pretty good teams. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that Luca and co. comes ready to play because if they don't, we're in another room like this. And I don't want, like, you know, it's it's – I like being able to gripe about very specific things like the, the existential griping of like what's going on with this team sort of sucks after a while because it feels a little bit hopeless, but when they, they, if they execute wrong, you know, okay, here's how they clean this up. But right now it's just like, like a loss like that where you just get pants on a national television game stinks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I think probably one thing that you touched on earlier that I'm like, I really miss Rick and Harlow Bob because I want those spacing boxes back because I, I figured out, I think it was the third quarter and like there was just two or three Luca passes to, to no one. 
And I was like, I just don't remember that happening last year where, yeah. and I'm just like, I don't know who they have to pay to get those spacing boxes back, but just get them back. <laughs> That's all I want. <laughs> I appreciate that. I agree. I and agree. Probably like the other thing that filled me with like a little bit of sadness, you know, after, you know, the starters are out, the Mavericks, you know, just a terrible game in general. Garbage time. We have Josh, Josh Green running around and Denver, you know, a good solid playoff team actually has good young players playing where I'm like, oh, it'd be nice if, you know, Dallas had a few of these players like that, like Bones Highland. I'd, he looked pretty good. Bull Bull, he was looking good. Like just, and I just don't see a path for Dallas to get many players unless like, there's some conspiracy to tank this season and, you know, they actually have a first round pick this year to get like a high draft pick, but a little, little too soon in the season to be talking about conspiracy theories like that. For sure. For sure. Um, got anything else before I uh, keep bringing on folks? No, I'll, I'll, I'll let the next people up. <laughs> Thanks Patrick. Appreciate you hanging out. All right. Got a few more people. My man, Lance. What's going on, Kurt? <clears throat> it's late. It's one fifteen. We- uh, eating pizza with orange juice while listening to all these people talk. But I, I had to stay up for this. So uh, let's just put it like this, man. It's, it's for the Mavs to take Shaq off national television at least one night a week. I'm I'm happy with that. So. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, it looks like the NBA is not going to be uh, – NBA on TNT is not going to be on Thursdays until uh, football season's over with. So I think the Mavs uh, poo-poo night against the Hawks had a lot to do with that. Maybe I'm wrong. But um, what do you think about that, Kurt? Uh, I understand where you're coming from. I'm I'm kind of – I think I'm just out of juice at this point in the night. I mean, I'm I'm watching um, while while you were talking, like I like I was going going through Nikias Duncan feed, and he had he showed that play at the very beginning of the game where Luca passes to to Dorian, Dorian hands it off to to Tim, Tim dribbles into a trap, and Jokic just takes the ball from him, and Luca just kind of meanders over into the corner, and it's just. There's, there's got to be, and I, I'm not answering your question, but I'm thinking about this. Like, there's got to be, Luca's got to commit to this a little better. Like, I understand why he can be frustrated, but it's just like, it, he, it, come on, he, he's got to be better than he's been. You know, I mean, you're right, Kirk, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to take this season as, even if the Mavs, if this just implodes, I think it's going to be a good thing because maybe it'll force Cuban to, I mean, maybe this is just talking out of my ass, but uh, force Cuban to realize he made an error. You know, and, and I mean, and the yeah. Mavs get a draft pick. And I mean, it's been a while since they picked a good draft pick. Because uh, I mean, out of all the people, that you got you got to care about the draft, though. Yeah, you got to care mean, about it institutionally. And Mark well, Cuban doesn't look, care about it. That's a, that's a thing, and it, it is messed up because out of all the people to score, everyone scored that suited up tonight, except for Josh Green. Yeah. Well, Green was. I know Green had some counting stats, but when Green did things with the basketball, nothing good happened. Like he got rebounds, which congratulations. But he shot a three from the corner that bounced off the front of the rim. And I'm not a good shooter, so I don't want to talk shit too much. But as a professional player, if you're doing something where it doesn't go off the far side of the rim, it means your shot is off, like, in a very – like he shot a floater. He passed, like, a jump pass to no one. I just – like, Green didn't score a single point when four – I think, like, 13 players played and all but him scored. Like, he's just – I. I the Josh Green thing, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. He's not good. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I, I know we're just kind of taking pot shots here, but it, and it maybe it's because I didn't watch. I, I'm, I was at work, so I haven't watched the game. Oh, don't do it I to mean, yourself, man. It's painful. This was one well, of the, this was one of the well, worst I, Mavs games I've. Watched. I think I'm gonna at least watch the first half. I mean, I feel like I at least have to do that. But I mean, first half was at least it was at least basketball. 
I mean, you got to remember, Nikola Jokic was a, a game time decision after he bumped knees. Uh, Couldn't have told me, man. He looked good. Yeah, I mean that that guy is a, and and that's the thing. He doesn't barely ever look like he's in shape. Even after he had COVID, remember in the bubble, and he and he was like super skinny. Right. It wasn't like he was in shape. He just lost a lot of weight from COVID, and he still. As as a big man, which is more impressive, he still can like work his way into the game. You know, say well, Luka, mm-hmm. he has to get into shape. But I mean, Jokic is not in shape, and he's still like killing people. So, yep. I guess that's more of a positional thing. But I don't know, man. I, I'm just I'm really like taking the emotion out of it. Once once Carlisle left and they hired Kid, I was like, man, this is a shit show. Like already more than it is, and I'm just gonna enjoy it as a, a person that writes about it and covers it. And I mean, best case scenario, Mavs don't make the playoffs and they make drastic roster changes and they get a draft pick. So well, I'm not uh, that's how I'm going to look at we'll, it. We'll, we'll see. But uh, I, I appreciate you hanging out, even though you didn't uh, have to watch the game. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I was uh, privileged in that way, but uh, have a nice night, Kurt. <laughs> All right. Later, buddy. All right. Uh, let's go through a couple more people. Cause everybody's been waiting. Jason, Jason, what's up? Fucking hell. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm glad this is late in the pod because I'm going to go off a bit. Luca is playing like shit. He does not give a shit. He's so out of shape. It's horrible to watch. And he's not the main problem here, but it pisses me off because uh, just spending a night watching him like this uh, just pisses me off. Like, he just needs to be better. Like, he's a young dude. He's emotional. This team doesn't have a great emotional leader. He gets tilted off all the time when he starts missing shots, but he just needs to play better. I think that's just obvious to all of us at this point. And I don't know. I don't want to go too much. We've already talked so much about this game, but ugh, I don't know. How long could it last if Jason, like, let's say we're 500 at Christmas. Is Jason Kidd fired at that point, or is he just, is just keeping just too stubborn? What do we think? I think he's, I think he's too stubborn. I do. Um, oh my god! I think what'll I think what'll be telling though is if we don't get any Mark Cuban quotes. Um, is if he goes silent for the first time in twenty years. But I, I I just I just as mad as I am about this game, I'm gonna need to see them fall under five hundred in like a two or three, you know be like like three and you know five or you know four and seven or something before I really believe anything's possible because. I mean, they knew it like, like, like they knew what they were getting into. And if they didn't know what they were getting into, meaning Cuban and company, then that's just another sign that they're as incompetent as I have pointed out. And I, I, I just can't get there yet. For as much as I feel that they're incompetent, my brain is like, my fan brain is still like, is this happening? I, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's a lot to deal with. To be fair to the Mavs, they have a really easy schedule coming up. I looked it up. By, like, the end of November, I think they face, like, the only good teams they face are, like, Boston and, like, Boston and the Heat. And I think, like, and Boston's Golden struggling. State. Yeah, like, even really Boston isn't very good. So, like, they could easily play, like, shit and be, like, 12th and 6th. That's, like, yes. what I called by, like, the end of November. And, like, I still think they might be bad even though they're 12th and 6th. So, kid might yeah. just be safe just because of the schedule, I think. I, I think that's a real possibility. And why... I like I went on a tirade in my podcast with Josh and then like cut out like four minutes because I'm just like I could very I could very rarely I could be wrong very quickly. Yeah, well hopefully this starts turning around a bit. Well, I just want to get to sleep and forget this whole thing. And whoever what it was, just Lance, I think is just talked about watching the game. Please do not watch this game. Yeah, I, I, it's not good for your health. Well, thanks, Jason. Appreciate you hanging out. Okay, let's go, Sam. What's up, Sam? How are we doing? Well, you know, uh, same same math shit, different years at this point. <laughs> so uh, I, I'll try to be quick too. I know it's late, but it's um, yeah, it, it's it's frustrating because at this point, since we've gotten Luca, it's it's been three years, especially since Dirk retired. It's been three years, same roster. Uh, first year it was basically Delon Wright. Then that didn't work, so we we got rid of him. Got Josh Richardson. That didn't work. Now we got Reggie Bullock. Not saying it's not going to work, but it's just 
the Mavericks as a whole are so stubborn that they want to keep the same starter lineup. So we don't know if it can work. Because, I mean, if it was a KP, Dorian, Bullock, Luca, Hardaway lineup, you know, the space would obviously be better. So who knows what would happen at that point? So we, we haven't seen that yet. So I don't know. But it's just, it's kind of hard to have optimism because, I mean, hell, it's been five games and KP's already missed two. <laughs> yep. In five, yep. In five, in five games. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that one because I know he wants to play, but it's just, it's like if, if, Ah, it's so difficult with him. I'm, I'm just, I, I don't even know if I can go there with him tonight because I, I, I feel badly for him. I mean, his black eye looked terrible. Do you see him on the bench? Like, it's somehow, like, I've not had a black eye in many, many years. I just don't remember the swelling continuing to go up on something like that. But I guess he got hit at just the right spot. Yeah, it didn't look good. So, I mean, but I'm not, I'm not going to bash him. I mean, because like everybody else, is, he's been actually playing pretty decent defense. So I can't really hate on him. It's just the offense isn't there. And uh, I'll just end off on this. I mean, just watching the West as a whole, obviously, like, for the most part, you know, teams like the Clippers, you know, they could have the excuse, hey, they don't have Kawhi. I mean, hell, even Denver, even though they got the MVP, they don't have Jamal Murray. And he might not even play the whole year. But Golden State, they're looking dominant, and Clay is not there yet. Uh, the Lakers, no matter how old they all look, you know, it's, it's still the Lakers. So the league and them will always get the benefit of the doubt. So they look good. Utah looks good. And, I mean, hell, these other teams like Phoenix or uh, the Kings, the Grizz, teams like that, they just look way better than the Mavs of the roster right now. Not even right. just, you know, as a team. Because, I mean, Luka's great, so he can carry the team, you know, potentially by himself to the playoffs. But, it, hell, look at the Knicks. Like, the Knicks roster as a whole is better than the Mavs roster right now. So it's, yeah. it's, it's just yeah. a matter of, okay, I, I, don't want, I don't want this to happen. But at some point, if it does bottom out, that might be the best thing that ever happened to this franchise at this point. I I just like things will go DEFCON one before they gets to, to like a bottom out discussion. Like they'll trade like Kittle trade make him and Nico will trade like five players before that happens. Like I, I just uh, any any sort of step back is a step is a sign that the decision to move on from Carlisle is was the wrong one. And I don't know if they can ever really have that discussion. Um, I do think moving on from Carlisle was probably the right move in retrospect. I just, I don't know what, I don't know how they came to this conclusion. And I'm hearing a fair, you know, I'm getting a fair amount of discussion with people where it's like, oh, well, this is, this is the Kokosov, I'm fucking up his name, uh, offense. And I'm just like, is it? Some of the plays maybe, but I just can't envision the spacing is, you know, he's, Anyway, so it's too late for me to babble on about this. But thank you, Sam. You too. All right. Last but not least, I saw him in there was Oscar. Oscar, how you doing? Thanks for Hey, thank you. First time caller. So. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. I would have brought you up earlier. I'm tired. I try to bring uh, people's names on. No, it's cool. It's cool. So um, uh, I have a thought uh, around the Luca issue. And I think. Uh, the problem is that the Mavs are having bad decisions, as usually. But uh, for this case, it's like he's tired in the fourth quarter, and uh, the solution is take the ball, the ball out of his hands. So, I mean, I hate to break this, but if you take the ball out of his hands, the Mavs are going to lose. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> so that's not a good idea. So uh, I think they are just trying to solve, instead of solving the problem, it's trying to solve, they're trying to solve the, um, the symptoms. So he's tired, so let's rest him the first two quarters. And what is happening is you're, you're blown uh, for by half time, or uh, he's uh, he's not in the game. He's totally mentally out because he's not handling the game. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think I think what that has to happen is it's, it's, it's an issue. It's a Luca problem, and I know nobody wants me the first. Nobody wants to blame Luca, but I'm sorry, it is Luca problem. He was saying in an interview. Uh, first year, I think that his favorite food is pizza and pasta. Well, that doesn't work. That doesn't work for being, you know, good say. So, this is a thing that he has to change. And somebody, I think maybe people are afraid to tell him that this is a problem for the future because he has to be on safe for fourth quarters. He has to be. He has to make this step, and the, the sooner the better. That was. Um... Is Todd Franco wrote about this like a month before the season started about how Luca and fourth quarters are 
are that's the key to unlocking his MVP candidacy because it's just we have enough data now to where he looks like shit in most fourth quarters. Um, last year was particularly bad, but there's a lot of extent. There's enough circumstances around it to where you can kind of say, okay, he he'll be better when he has, you know, when he's not playing four and a half games a week kind of thing. But I don't really know what what it's going to take. I mean, JJ Bray t- talked about this on a podcast with JJ Redick where he said it's just. It's him realizing that he needs to be a professional. And that's where I keep coming back to. I, I probably said this earlier. I say it a lot, but I, I, they need to pay whatever they can to go get Goran. Uh, Goran Dragic will make a difference to him. And if they don't go get Goran, go get some vet that can pull him aside and and, and try to get him to be an adult because he, he just, he's been so good while not having to commit. Yes. Yeah. And, and he just, he, he, yes. that's how it takes the next 100%. step. I, I think actually the Goran Dragic would be really great. Not that second handler is just a big brother to him. Like just, you know, put your shit together and do things right. It's not, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not a thing that is, I mean, it's 20 years old, it's normal, but it is a thing that if he's um, as a veteran, as a, as, like a veteran as a player, because he's really good, uh, he has to make this mental step forward that, being as better and as well in off the court. So somebody, and yeah, I, th- I think Kokoskov could do that. I, from my personal point of view, I think Kit should go as soon as possible and Kokoskov uh, take care of the team because he could do this because he was handling him uh, uh, in the in his national team. So I think he could be anything like that. I was, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Madrid. I'm Spanish and I was uh, following him in Madrid and. Uh, uh, I was. I'm thinking many times, like, how would be uh, Pablo Lasso as a coach here? Because every, everyone would be freaking out. But uh, he needs uh, Luca needs something, like, someone like that uh, behind him, just telling him the truth. You know, you have to make a step forward in this. And I was that's joking. Made, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, that's what made Carlisle, who was Carlisle for his entire career, had been a control freak, and. I think people sort of misunderstand when when he sort of let Luca do whatever he wanted. Um, I think he was a micromanager with timeouts and was kind of frustrating about things like that. But he let Luca run the plays. Like Luca was the offense, and Carlisle that was really a surprise um, for people. And I, I sort of think that I, I'm coming to conclusion that if you, Luca has to have some restraints or at least people that are willing to fight with him. I think he's a passionate guy who wants to win, and I think he craves that kind of thing to a degree. Carlisle really wants to win, but Carlisle is cold. And it, it, for, for Carlisle to both cede control to him while also still managing to be an ass is pretty impressive. And so you're, you're not the first person who's mentioned this, where it's just like a, a really strong coach that will get with him and partner with him is something that that I think that he can use. And instead, right now, they have Jason Kidd, who seems to be a player's coach, who doesn't really seem to get that animated on the sidelines. And I, I just think they could use a little more fire from the spot. Yeah, totally. And uh, I think, from my point of view, Lucas would be rolling uh, the, uh, in the court. He has to be the boss there because he's so good at it. He has the highest IQ in the league. And... Uh, uh, everything. The thing is that uh, in any coach is going to um, tell him a better play because he is making the plays uh, in runtime whenever it's happening. So he improvises and he changes everything. So mm-hmm. he's going to make the right play, the right play every time. And, uh, and I remember Porzingis is complaining about this uh, after complaining was complaining every time, but about this it was complaining last year. Like he was, uh, he is okay with uh, the plays in the flow, but he wants some plays from the bench. So he was like, I don't want Luca to rule the thing. I want the coaches to do it. And this is just making a worse team. Yeah. I mean, there's Zach Lowe in his article on ESPN today showed some, like there was one, it was only one video clip of one play, but it was like Porzingis kind of meaningless posting up 15 feet away, which wrecked all the spacing. And then Luca just shot the ball anyways from about 30 feet instead of, and it's just, it's the basketball possessions are precious. <laughs> um, and the Mavericks so far this season have wasted a lot of them. And I, I they have to figure out a way to get more. They, fi- they have to figure out a way to get more from these players because the same group of guys was among the most efficient and effective offenses two years ago. So. 
Well, thank you for hanging out, Oscar. You got anything else? Just one quick more thing. Uh, Moses Brown has to play more for his good and for the good of the team. That's only the, the last thing. Because plays hard, plays good, and he you can see his motivation. Every time I see saw him talking, it's like he is hundred percent for this. And he's actually good, fast, and big. So what else do you want? Yeah, I mean I think he's he's a little bit like he needs a lot more seasoning within a team structure, but I I I love effort players. Um it's why I still kind of understand Dwight Powell, why why play why people really stick to him. Uh, but above all else, he's at least something different. I mean, we've seen a lot of these other guys. Like Willie Collie Stein is one of the most yeah. impressive athletes I've ever seen, and he just doesn't care. And it, it, comparative to someone like Moses, who runs so hard. Yeah, totally. I would just switch power by Mo- for Moses uh, for the uh, for the starting lineup, even more now that KP is not there. Do you have some size? I mean, what, what can it what can it hurt? I, I wouldn't mind it. The starting line has been so bad. Like, who cares? So, right. well, thank you. Appreciate okay, you hanging out. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, guys. This has been Kirk Henderson. We've had a very long episode of group therapy. For anybody that actually listens to the whole podcast, you are a saint. Uh, Josh and I will try to be back or with Halloween coming up, but we I have a five year old, so I don't even know if I'm going to get to watch the game. We'll figure out coverage in some way, shape, or form, but that Sunday game may not be our finest hour. Um, I hope you guys all have a nice weekend, and we will talk soon. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical.